Welcome to Conversations with Leaders. I'm Jake Burns, and today I'm joined by Hanno Blankenstein, CEO and co-founder of Unleash Live. Hanno, can you please tell our audience a little bit about yourself and your background? I'm the co-founder of Unleash Live. We are a live video analytics platform. Essentially, we measure reality with the assistance of machine learning algorithms. We do this with smart cities and enterprise customers who have large and dispersed assets. Before Anish Live, I exited two startups and in between, I held the role of the head of Asia Pacific for BCG Digital Ventures. So in leading the development of these new and innovative products, what in your experience have been the most important keys to success? Since I was a teenager, I was always fascinated to build new product experiences. And the way I did this was always to listen, to ask questions, to be curious about how things change in our life. And it was never a grand idea or a great vision that I had. Um, I, I just love to ask questions, just be humble, inquisitive, and talking to people. Can you think of any particular lessons that you learned back in those early CompuServe days that are still relevant to you today as CEO? CompuServe was the, the original social network. It had class, it had all of the ingredients that you see in, in the modern social network, and it proliferated knowledge across the world, which is a powerful tool for anything in business. Those early days, they have shown me to listen to signals that are out there in the world and very much connect the dots between those signals. So whenever we innovate at Unleash Live and um, with our customers, we actually listen for those signals of change. And then we go back into our engineering teams, into our product teams, talking to sales, and we identify the connected tissue, what really works to drive a better workflow, to drive a better customer experience, to drive a new way of partnering with clients or running analytics, how we've never done it before. So the CompuServe days were fascinating in a way because you tapped into not only the knowledge, but you were able to receive those signals into your home and at your desktop you could actually just think about what these signals meant for creative and innovative solutions. In your experience, how important is talent? One of the most important assets in any small business is talent. Next to the technology platform which you innovate on to give you scale, talent is the single most important asset to make you successful in the market. And so we pay a lot of attention to selecting the talent that joins us, but also how we grow and provide opportunities for our staff and not only our staff, but actually the talent that partners with us to be successful in the market. Criteria are pretty simple. Firstly, you almost need to find soulmates, soulmates that are just passionate the same way that I am as a founder. People that don't really care too much about the working hours or the benefits on the job, but a team that just loves what we do and just comes to, to the office every day, not thinking about work, but the outcome that we create together. I just look for the human that's willing to have a great journey with me while we grow a company. When looking at talent, specifically for leadership positions, are there any particular qualities that you look for? The top things are pretty straightforward. First, we need to get along. We need to get along in the uh, sunny days, but then also very much so when we have barriers and tough moments. That's what makes a great team. The second thing is we need to support each other. So supporting each other means not only giving advice and showing how to do things, it's also to very much so 
take on the load, making sure that you chip in in the tough moments. And then the final thing is, we are in it for the long term. There's this misconception that when you're a small company, a startup, you just want to experiment. Well, that's not true. We have a plan and we are executing on that plan. And in a startup, you need to be much more precise about execution, much faster, much more willing to make decisions, fast decisions in uncertain times with very little information. So that's what I'm looking for. Somebody that has the ambition, but also the drive towards action and getting stuff done. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Who you take with you on the journey is crucial. So uh, let me ask you, what particular qualities are the most important in your opinion? Is it cultural fit, the willingness to learn, right attitude? What are the top things that you look for? Well, one of the things we do early on is make them experience something very uncomfortable, seemingly uncomfortable. So we send them to client engagements, right straight into, into the deep end, send them out there. And all we say is just listen, listen carefully, ask good questions. How would you ever assume that you know the answers already? So, so one of the important things is to get our team out into the market, experience the workflows, the interactions, the products that currently exist, experience those things for themselves and then bring the learnings back into the team. The second thing we do is we have forums. We have a very permeable communication environment where it's very good and ve very much expected in the safe environment of the team to share very openly your observations and conclude of what the implications might be for um, the product, the technology, our business model, the sales experience. I think that's a fantastic list. So once you get these folks that have these qualities, how do you get them trained so that they have the skills necessary to accomplish what you're trying to do? Sure, any new environment has this innate pushback where um, you first resist to change, you resist to accept something different. Uh, at the same time, that is the DNA. This is the, the, the mesh, the, the, the connected tissue that I was talking about. Um, you, you, firstly, you're not alone, right? And the, um, so, so within the team, we're inspired by how we communicate and how we talk about um, change, how we talk about providing new services that the customer hasn't experienced yet, how we are able to sell those new services into uh, the industry. Um, so um, we, we overcome this resistance to actually providing that connected tissue in the organization. The second thing is um, we never see change or an innovative experience as replacing the old. One of the uh, things I learned early on was to think about innovation as complementary to the existing world. When we think about providing great machine learning assisted inspections for wind farms, we don't replace the great engineer that does wind farm inspections. We only enhance the great work that he or she does with machine learning algorithms so that the wind farm inspector can do better and faster, higher quality work. So that's true for any innovation. If you think about innovating to replace the old, you will face a lot of resistance. If you think about innovation complementing and augmenting the current reality, you will have open doors to walk through. So in your opinion, is innovation the exclusive purview of top leadership? Or is it possible to inspire your organization to innovate at all levels? And if so, how do you do it? Inspiring innovative thinking is, is, is one thing. The most important outcome for, for me as a leader is that my team is actually acting and delivering 
innovation. So those are two very different things for me. Anyone can talk about ideas and great visions that they have, and many people do so. However, delivering on innovation through a task completed or a product that's been shipped or a product that just failed in the market and you capture the feedback, that's much tougher because it requires action and it requires really the strong appetite and the strong um, uh, belief that you will succeed. So in, in any team that I lead, I use some techniques that are very effective. One is every employee should be listening into sales calls, but actually also go out to customers, make sure that everyone sells and partners and talks to customers openly, honestly, candidly about their current situation, their current challenges, and how our solution will provide a benefit for them. And be very realistic if it doesn't. The second thing is we actually rotate our team a lot. We put people into situations to complete tasks that they have never experienced before. And that is so essential to then be more resilient as we grow bigger. Because every single engineer should have been in a customer support call. Every single salesperson should have looked at code. So if you combine those experiences, you will have a much stronger foundation as you grow and you build the next leaders while you as the CEO are further removed um, from the day-to-day -day operations as you become a um, bigger company. Okay. Well, what advice would you give leaders who may want to try this approach for the first time? The advice is to start today. Start today, find a situation where you can team up. Don't, don't do it alone, but actually team up in a group of three to four, um, kind of like an, a small team that will go through experiencing those moments, those barriers that, that, that customers um, pr um, provide to you, um, those difficult situations where you are um, facing resistance to change, and then work through it in the team and communicate it back to um, other team members openly and candidly. And if you could go back to the beginning, what advice would you give yourself? You get a lot of advice. So it is actually a fascinating moment um, through technology, how you have 25 different communication channels. And when you build something new, the, everyone wants to participate in that experience, which is great. The challenging bit that I found is um, you need to get really vested and passionate and you need to find the right people that are all going all the way with you. That's advice number one. Find the people and the partner that is willing to persevere and to persist. The second piece of advice is very much around timing. So yes, you can ship early and you can prototype and you can test in the market. However, some of these products, which are great, don't scale. So at Unleash Live, for example, we had an offer for remote visual inspections for large scale infrastructure for years. And we did well, but only in the last quarters through the current challenges in the world where we need to rely more on remote ability to view your infrastructure where you cannot physically actually access that infrastructure or you want to be in a place that is pretty much um, limited by, by, by not having access. Only now does our offer really take off. And 
the industry appreciates the value that it brings to keeping the infrastructure safe and secure and inspect that infrastructure regularly through the assistance of machine learning algorithms and connected cloud computing. So my advice back to any other company that's building a business, you might have great products and great solutions, but the timing might just not be right. So be patient and find that moment. It will come, but you need to have the persistence and perseverance to follow through. Great advice. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Hanno, and sharing your experiences with us. Thanks for having me, Jake. It was a pleasure.